guys right here, your coffee coach, and I'm joined with the genius inventor, Mark Volker, <laughs> the brains behind the Trinity One and all of these other lovely devices that you see in front of you. So thanks for joining us, Mark. No problem, mate. Thanks for coming on. Um, we're going to start brewing one of the coffees that, uh, with one of your devices yes, here yes. called the Trinity Zero Pod version. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And what we're going to be brewing on is the lovely filter blend that's still in development now, but it's a blend of a Guji, our yoga chef beans, which you can get online, and also an anaerobic fermentation Colombian coffee. So it's a really interesting, full, great. fruity coffee. So Awesome. Um, yeah, let's get into brewing, and then we'll talk about your history. Yes. Starting with the Trinity One. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll grab this one here. So this is my latest product called the Trinity Zero. It's the Z-Pod edition. But yeah, to quickly backtrack while I'm brewing, um, my journey did start up here with the Trinity One Brewer. And actually, you and I met, would yeah. have been, what, 2016 or yep. something? So right. going back at least six years ago. Um, so it's been quite a journey. I don't know if I'd call myself a genius, but no, hey, I've we, we, made, made it this far. <laughs> at least that's yeah. something, I suppose. Yeah. But um, yeah, so this brewer here, to briefly give you all an idea of uh, my thinking behind it, um, I just love drinking filter coffee, uh, and that's the style of coffee that I've always preferred. I was actually at a dinner party um, one night with a mate of mine, and he just busted out after dinner this gold filter, which is probably back, I don't know, 10 years ago now. Uh, and I just remember thinking, wow, this is actually an amazing way to enjoy coffee. We had actually just moved on from drinking some wines with dinner, and then this coffee came in and kind of just followed suit. Like, it had a really wine characteristic there was a lot of kind of aroma going on, a lot of complexity, and the way you described that coffee was very similar to how you could describe the wine yeah. prior. So that kind of got me interested into coffee, and I journeyed from there to try and find a brewer that could kind of emulate that, you know, that nice espresso vibe of, of kind of the, the process of, of brewing coffee in a nice aesthetic. Um, that's kind of what led me to design the Trinity One. So the Trinity One brewer kind of captures the experience and the, the kind of... Um, feeling of brewing coffee in a really nice way to then create a great cup. It combines a lot of different um, brew methods, all in the one device as well, so you can experiment a lot with uh, brewing. But yeah, journey from there, this is the um, one we'll start brewing now, um, the Z-Pod edition. So I've actually just got a paper filter in the bottom. I'm going to throw that on the scale. And uh, the other one. Yep, if you don't mind, we'll just... Um, get this going so we've got about 12 grams of coffee we're simply going to place that in the chamber and then we'll grab our kettle so this recipe about 12 grams of coffee I'm going to throw in 200 mils of water so what got you to you know you're an industrial designer your background yeah, engineer actually. Oh, yeah, engineer. engineer sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, it's all good. And uh, yeah, I really fell in love with the design of the Trinity One when you were on Kickstarter. Yes. Doing your second um, attempt at Kickstarter campaign. Correct. Yes. Yes. The first one didn't get to the numbers that you wanted it to. Um, but yeah, I fell in love with the design. I loved the fact that it was a, a three-in-one, yes. almost a four-in-one. I think there's yeah there's since, possibility. since the original. Yeah. yeah, there were some additional brew methods. Yeah. Um, but the, um, yeah, the design, the ability to do your press, your mm. immersion, uh, and you know, pour over. That's this is actually I... our factory standard one. Right, this one. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, so the American Walnut Timber. We followed up with a bamboo kind of addition, a lighter, in terms of just bringing the cost down for some yeah. people that weren't willing to pay for the premium. So that model's come through. But then uh, following through from this model here, I came and developed this, these two products under the Delta Coffee brand, so they're um, products that I've designed. I'm trying to solve issues with each product. So the Delta Press for me, it's all about controlling your, uh, uh, the water and the ratio of coffee without any agitation. Yeah. So that's an unwanted thing when you're doing an immersion process. Uh, so the ability to then kind of create a bit of a pour over experience where you've got your coffee and water separated, you dose the water through at given times, a bit like when you're pouring your water through, you let it yeah. sit, your water through, you let it sit. That kind of idea, but separating the coffee and water during yeah. that process. So that's in a nutshell the Delta Press. The Cold Drip is the, the next product that I developed. So basically on that one, it's a valveless cold drip. So um, I kind of figured out when you've got your cold drip in a generic water reservoir, when you adjust your, your drip rate, by the time the water comes down, you've got to come back and readjust, yeah. readjust, readjust. So I actually found that through a bit of 
thinking through the process, I've got three um, trays that are all at a fixed height. So what's actually happening is that the, the drip rate stays constant because the drip rate over the coffee, as it drips, so do the, the, tra yeah. um, the trays above it. So at the, at the level above the coffee, that, that water level stays constant, which means that the drip rate over the coffee stays constant. That's awesome. Uh, right up until the, the last tray itself drains out. Yeah. Um, so that's that product. What we've got here now, this has been brewing for a couple of minutes. This is the, the Z Pod. So this one comes with what I call the Z Pod. And what that gives you is a chance to, you can, it comes with one included. You can purchase additional ones. If you're going away camping uh, and you're not really up for like immediate fresh coffee, uh, if you're willing to have pre-ground just for a couple of days, um, you can pre-grind and then you just drop the pot in, brew, easy to clean, you just pull it out again and you're done. But if you're at home and you've got a bit more time, like what you see here, we've let that now sit for about three minutes. You just give that a spin and then add your pump on the top at the end. Basically controls your drawdown. So this is, if I said earlier about the Delta Press, you're separating the coffee and water. On this one, you're actually creating a bit yeah. more of that immersion environment. But kind of a hybrid between that and a drip, because you've got the coffee and water in contact, but at the same time, it's dripping through. A bit more like a no, no bypass yeah. brewer, but we can control the drawdown at the end. So once you've hit the time you want, you just simply pump through the remaining water. Um, and that should take no longer than about you know, 30 to 60 seconds at the end, uh, depending on your brew recipe. So generally, probably a little bit coarser than, say, maybe what a V60 would be, because uh, obviously all that coffee is quite concentrated yeah. in that puck at the bottom. Um, yeah, so that's that product. And then prior to the Z-Pod, I also had developed, this is the original Trinity Zero. Um, now, this is all about being compact. I mean, this yeah. is the smallest coffee yeah. press that I'm aware of out there that can just simply brew your filter style. Uh, and this one's a bit interesting. So what I tried to do on this one is you've got your filter basket in the bottom, comes with a stainless steel included. You can add a paper if you still prefer that the paper filter result. But if you are to dose your, your uh, coffee into the basket, place it on the bottom, you use 100 ml of water. There's a line there shown. Yeah. So if you're out hiking or whatever, you don't need to carry your yeah. scales. Um, you brew that, you press the 100 ml through, and then you actually then add your bypass water into the cup. So if you wanted to create your normal 200 ml Coffee, you just simply yeah. add the hot water after. So you're creating a stronger extraction on this that you then dilute back yeah. to your filter cup at the end. And that's the logic with that one. I love it. I love the progression getting from the biggest brewer right down to the <laughs> most compact. Much. That's right, I yeah. mean, this one, I do remember seeing you taking that out in the backpack up yes. to Mount Cutha, I think <laughs> it was, and extracting it there. But obviously yep. for the avid camper, the mm -hmm. size of the Trinity Zero is just Yeah, perfect, that's you know, right. Like... I guess that always hinted to my love of the outdoors. <laughs> I was willing to carry that thing around. So, yeah, but years have gone by. I've, mm. I've gotten into camping a lot yeah. more. We've got kids now at home. And this one, yeah. this one and these two ones are the ones that I'm generally using for those experiences. The Delta Press, very much a bit more about a specialty coffee experience. You can really play around with a lot of ratios and things with that. We do have a new uh, accessory coming out for the Delta Coffee Press, so that's something to keep an eye out for later this year, uh, which will also enhance that brewing experience. But otherwise, they're all kind of in their own kind of little niche area, yeah. I suppose, yeah, which is filter coffee. Yeah, and like you said, they're all solving the problems that people come up with just yes. in the general pour over of all, you know, other brands that do yeah. press coffees and Correct. stuff like that. Correct, yeah, so that's it, yeah. So you're solving those problems in each device. That's there. right, yeah. You know, this is not as similar to an AeroPress as people might yeah, initially correct. Yeah. view it as? as? Yeah, in terms of as appearance, yeah, mm. it may create a different uh, impression, but yeah, in terms of function, yeah, completely, completely different. different. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And uh, that's the thing with my products. I'm trying to create something new. I'm not trying to recreate things yeah. that have already been done. I've always tried to create something that is offering something new and an alternative to what's out there already. And we're going to do a video, separate video coming soon of these individual brewers giving you the full recipe, the best recommended recipe and use of each one. So we'll stay tuned for that one soon. Uh, but are we ready to drink now? Yes, let's give oh, this one a go. Let's hey? try this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we are. So this, I can already smell that it's a very nice coffee. So let's have a, have a taste. Oh, and that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's it's great. gorgeous. Yeah. Very fruity just like really nice deep um, aromas. Oh. Cheers, mate. Uh, yeah, cheers. <laughs> Thanks for Good coming to see on. you again. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> this, yeah, this really, I think, highlights a lot of the complexities in this coffee. I mean, yep. I'm really falling in love with this 
anaerobic fermented, uh, fermented Colombian, but on its own, it's a little bit overbearing. And so I've decided to put in balance uh, it out with some, the Jörg Chef and the Guji. Yes. Still keeps that complexity, but like you said, it's, it's got more of that balanced mm. um, flavor now. Absolutely, and, and that um, is 100% balanced. It's yeah. really beautiful. It's got the fruit. It's got the acidity, but it's yeah. also just not overpowering. Yeah. It's just a really nice uh. mouthfeel at the end as well. So tell me about Kickstarter. Obviously, we've got a lot of people now trying to use Kickstarter to launch their products. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you're a bit of a pro at it. <laughs> uh, what, you know, any things that you can tell, any tips and hints on someone wanting to launch a product now on Kickstarter? How, yeah, how would you yeah. go about it? I think uh, in this day and age, like... Coming from where I started with the Trinity One, the, the market has changed quite dramatically, actually. Um, I think for now, like, you'd have to start building your newsletters and socials yeah. and a bit of a following and a bit of interest in what you're doing. Um, and then, obviously, using someone that's skilled on their, on their online e-commerce yeah. ads is very useful during the campaign just to target the right people because yeah. uh, there is a, a lot of people interested in these new innovative products um, and there's so many of them out there. Uh, but, yeah, having the right people that to work with, I'd imagine, is yeah. a really important part yeah. of it, yeah. What are your thoughts on the future of coffee? Yeah. So, uh, you know, where do you think it's going to go in the next, say, five to ten years? Yes, yeah, well, um, again, following my own journey, I guess it's quite unique because I'm an outsider to the industry, I suppose, as an engineer. I've come in yeah. purely with the, my interest in coffee designing these products. And what I've, what I've noticed is around the time of the Trinity One, there was a lot of interest in brewing and a lot of uh, interest in kind of experimenting a lot more. Uh, but I, I think what I've seen through the years is, is there's been a bit more of an interest in more the convenience, but in, in the format of being still specialty coffee. Yeah. Uh, so hence why I've tried to come up with the Z-Pod uh, and then the, you know, the love of the outdoors. Is yeah. There's certainly a growing interest in brewing wherever you go. Um, but at the core of it, like within the industry, there's, there's certainly still a lot of uh, interest and, and growth in, in specialty coffee, yeah. making coffee better all the time. Uh, and I would love to see more people drinking filtered coffee. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's always my biggest disappointment, uh, yeah. is that everyone's still very much focusing on their milk and espresso, which is fine. That is yeah. what it is. But I just think when you, I mean, you, you smell and taste yeah. the coffee like this, it just, you just wonder why people, you know, or you wonder what they're missing out on yeah, and you know what they're missing right. out on. It's, you know, there's a lot more to experience uh, from the industry and I think it's just a matter of getting it out to the customers yeah. to enjoy. Yeah, and I think you're exactly right. Like you miss out on all the nuanced flavours mm -hmm. when you add milk, um, even like just using it as an espresso and, and drinking it yep. uh, a short black or a long black you still lose a lot of those nuanced flavours that you just pick up as you do a, a lighter brew. And I think for a lot of people, we're still in that dessert phase of mm -hmm, drinking mm -hmm. coffee. You know, it's like a, it's a nice warm hug, mm -hmm. you know. But the health benefits of coffee, and a lot of people, I even cop a lot of flack from people on the channel about, oh, coffee is evil, coffee is addictive, mm -hmm. it's bad for you, why would you want to start drinking it? But that's just a misnomer. Like, people don't realise this is probably one of the superfoods, yep. you know, in terms of how many antioxidants, riboflavins, vitamins, uh, all different great, uh, beautiful nutrients in coffee. Mm. As soon as you add sugar and milk, you're counteracting all of those mm -hmm. nutrients. And so for people wanting to get into a more healthier Healthy, lifestyle, yeah. mm -hmm. filter coffee is the way to go because even a long black takes a long time for your palate to adjust. You know, yeah, it's yeah. such a, in, like, kick in the teeth almost. Yeah. Whereas filter, you know, if you're drinking tea, it's very similar. Like, it's mm, just mm, another mm, step mm. in that direction. Yep. Um, but, you know, you get all of those rewards. Yep. Well, I'll drink to that. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I would encourage you, if you have any love for coffee and, and want to explore further than beyond just your espresso, then really look into uh, the Trinity products because they are just, not only are they beautifully designed, I think that you. You know, goes without saying, but they are really well engineered and crafted. And you will just experience, like this coffee here, just beautiful highlighted flavours that mm. you wouldn't normally get from some of the other brewers. Yeah. You know, just a basic um, V60 is not going to highlight this uh, level yeah, yeah. of um, complexity. Well, I guess the, the important thing to note on that is, obviously, if you are interested in this gear, is you, you match it with a great coffee. Like, yes. you come into a place like this with your, yourself and your team, you select the, yeah. you know, the, take the advice if you need it, but yeah. they're 
the key thing is, is it does express coffee really nicely, but you do need to obviously yeah. grab the right bag. You've got to, to start with, with a good product. Start with a filter <laughs> bag. Don't go for an espresso no, bag. Right. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit. And so we'll actually be selling these products online. So you can jump on coffeebeansdelivered.com.au and view these products there and grab one for your home or for your camping trip right now. So jump on there. Well, that's it for me. And thank you, Mark, for coming on and talking us through your beautiful products here. I look forward to potentially doing a Delta Press competition with you in the future. Sounds good. So stay tuned yep. for that. I'm Ryde, your coffee coach, and as always, enjoy your brew. Cheers. Cheers, mate. <laughs>